Hey, band choir and orchestra directors. If you are working on your classroom culture this year, then you've found the right place. Today, I'm talking about having fun in the classroom. If you've already missed our previous videos in this series on honesty, mistakes, and modeling, go back and check those out and then come back here and watch this one. As teachers of elective classes, we know that it's important for kids to have fun in our ensembles for retention purposes. And sometimes it can be hard to strike that balance between good learning and having a good time. So here are some of my strategies for ensuring that my class is fun, but we still get the work done. The number one thing is to start creating a positive association between musical success and fun times in the classroom. That means that when students do something well on their instrument, whether it's as a whole group, as a section, as an individual, hype them up. And I am talking overreact. I am raising the roof. I am slapping air fives. I am throwing fist bumps. I am giving rounds of applause. You want them to start getting those little hits of dopamine from performing well on their instrument or on their voice. If you wanna double down on hype, you can come up with a short class specific, room specific, ensemble specific cheer or chant that everybody does when somebody's got hype coming their way. It's the same for non-musical accomplishments. Often when I had rehearsals, they were first period or last period of the day, which coincidentally is the same time as building wide announcements. So when the announcements would come on at the beginning or end of class, and we would hear that the track team won their meet last night, and I knew that I had track runners in my classroom, they would be met with the same level of hype as the percussionists who just nailed their entrance in measure eight. The number two thing that I do is try to laugh with my students every single day. And everybody's got a little different tolerance for the amount of tomfoolery that goes on in their room. And so this will vary from person to person. Me, myself, I like a little bit of shenanigans, but only when it's time for those. And I count it as part of my job as their teachers to teach them when it's appropriate to laugh and fool around and have a good time and when it's time to roll up your sleeves and get the work done. So in my class, I'm very intentional about setting what is work time, what is play time, and maybe right now we need to get down to business. But in 10 minutes, we're going to have a break for two minutes where you get to stand up and stretch and chat with your neighbor for a second. And in those two minutes, they get to chill out a little bit, have a tiny brain break and have fun. And that's when I'm going to interact with them and laugh and fool around. I know as well as you that every single day in school is not going to be a picnic and having fun is going to be an uphill battle some days. So on a day when you have had five angry parent phone calls and emails and you had to break up a fight at lunch and then you had to write referrals for your six period prep, it's okay if now and then the kids come in to a band director or choir director who says, listen you guys, I've had a really bad day. I'm so sorry if I seem crankier than usual, but just take it easy on me today, okay? This is actually in the service of being honest with your kids and your kids will see you as more human because of it. And in those cases, you might be surprised with A, how gently they'll treat you and B, how much they might improve your own mood before they leave the room. Some of those days where I have had the worst day walking into class, I have felt uplifted and joyful on the way out of class because of the kids. On those days, it's important to remember to take a deep breath and not let all those outside factors stop you from having fun at the job that you love doing. That's it for this week's tip, and I hope you can join me next week when we're going to discuss the very controversial topic of sarcasm and whether or not to use it in the classroom. Catch you next time.